So how do we do this? Let's go over the process. The number one thing you can never ever do in a sales process is answer the person's first set of questions. And I'll tell you why. Because you will immediately come off as someone who's trying to sell them something. You wouldn't go to an attorney and sprinkle a bunch of questions at your attorney at the first second of the meeting and have him answer it. You wouldn't go to a doctor and, and just ask a bunch of questions before he understands your situation. So we intuitively know that anyone who answers your first set of questions without understanding what you really need, what your issues are, what your needs and wants are, is probably not a professional, not a subject matter expert. First of all, to have a corporation where the customer is a priority is not as easy as it sounds, and it has to come from the top. So let's get that out of the way. If only people at the bottom are concerned or it's just a priority for people who are actually dealing with the clients or the customers, that may not be effective. The, 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 the importance of listening to your customer is really, really important. And that has got to start from the top. And, you know, what the phrase I like to use is make sure you – don't treat, treat your customers like a widget. If your customers are a widget, and if that's the message that people on top s send, I think it's easy for customers to often realize they're being treated as a number, that just there's just one more sale, one more person. So out, let's get it out of the way. If the people on top have that attitude, I would say it will permeate the organization because during meetings and, and opportunities to improve things, that will not be a priority. So we're going to talk about how to not to do that, but let's understand that the people on top have to send the message that we are going to uh, let our customers speak to us, give us feedback, and we're going to use that information to get better. And we're always going to try to get better by getting that feedback and understanding their needs and wants. E-National Testing makes getting a simple laboratory test as easy as ordering something online. With three simple steps, you can have your tests ordered for STDs, general health, allergy testing, diabetes screening, blood titers, and more. You can simply go in for testing the same day and get your results quickly to your email. eNationalTesting.com's complete healthcare panels come with easy to understand results at over 2,700 locations nationwide. It's time to focus on yourself. eNationalTesting.com. Easy, convenient, and tailored to your health needs. So let's talk about what goes into pricing slash value and how these factors should help, deter help you determine your pricing model. So the first thing people think about pricing is they look at their margin, right? So they say, okay, this tire has a cost of goods uh, to me of this. I need to make 20%, so the price is going to be that. But that's not really the best way to look at it because there's other things involved than your cost of goods. I mean, of course, there's overhead, so there's you know indirect costs that you're going to need. But even beyond the indirect costs that, you know, salaries and all that, I get that. But at the end of the day, you will have a gross margin and a net margin. But that's not the whole story. And when you're starting a business, I think people just think that is the whole story. There's other things involved, and I'm going to go through them. Number number well, the first thing is the margin. Number two is the time, right? Uh, if I am selling a product that literally somebody orders from my website, it gets drop shipped from a third company, I basically, and and I get paid automatically, and the money goes into Authorize.net, it gets deposited in my bank account. And I rarely get any customer support questions. Uh, obviously, the time on that is minimal to, to none or versus the extreme portion of time where a customer signs up. Uh, they need to have a full onboarding. They're going to have multiple visits, multiple questions. Uh, the sale process is going to take four visits or an hour-long conversation or appointment. So the time it takes to get that margin is part of the equation. So I think when people say, oh, well, you know, we're going to make, you know, selling these vacuum cleaners, we're going to make $500. But if it takes you an hour, two hours, three hours to do a demo of it, and I'm just making that up, that's not the same as if you just had it on a website, somebody did a couple of clicks and ordered it and got it. So I think when you look 
at pricing, you also have to look at the time factor. The first touch for some companies, if you own a pizza shop, is often when people may walk into your store. Or if you have an online business, the first touch is when they go online and see your website. For others, it's uh, they may email or use some other form of internet or social media contact to get in touch with your business. But whatever that way is, it's really important to invest in that. And I think people often forget that whoever is going to be the person that first touches that client or customer will dramatically impact their view of that company. Now, that may not seem such a big deal, but often I think people don't understand that you know, your clients that come to you are maybe big and small, but if they all have a bad experience or some of them have a bad experience or not a top-notch experience with that first touch with your company, that could dramatically impact your business. I'll give you an example. Recently, you know, I checked into a hotel, you know, way after midnight, uh, and um, it was basically somebody at the front desk, you know, who was obviously working the grave graveyard shift, and I tried to check in, and there was a problem with the reservations. Things happen. But what I noticed is the person actually didn't get up from their seat. Uh, they actually just sat there. Now, that may be okay because I'm just one client coming in. But let's say, you know, I was there to maybe look at the operations of that company to maybe purchase that hotel or whatever. A bad experience for a random client, you know, may, is bad. But you also never know when that bad random experience may be with a potential client that may be a huge client for you. 